In this episode of the Builder Studio, we're going to show you how to build this modern wine cabinet using our wine rack lattice, five quarter lumber, and sanded square legs. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. To get started with this project, we're going to first create the channel into the side of our legs for our wine rack lattice. I'm going to make the channel the same width as my wine rack lattice, which is 15 16 of an inch. Once I've determined how far I want my wine rack to sit inside my leg, I can make some reference marks on my square leg so that I can transfer them to my router table. We're using a 29 by 3.5 inch square leg from Osborne. This is going to act as a support on the inside of our cabinet for our wine rack. To create this channel into the leg, I'm going to use a standard spiral cutting bit from my router table. This is going to allow me to cut from the bottom and slowly raise my bit up to meet the desired depth. Once I've adjusted the height of my cutting bit, I can set my fence to the marks created on my leg and go ahead and run them through my router table. I'm going to be creating a channel that's about one inch deep, so I'm going to only take off one quarter inch at a time to ensure I'm not overloading my router bit. Now that a channel is cut for our wine rack to slide into, I'm going to dry fit them together so that I can pull measurements from the bottom and top. I need the wine rack to be flush with the top of my leg, so I'm going to pull to 29 inches and make this cut on my miter saw. Now that I'm done with my wine rack and square legs, I can go ahead and dry fit them together and pull some measurements for my top and bottom panels. I need the interior spacing between my two wine racks to be 6 inches to allow for proper bottle sizes. I also plan to have a 1 inch overhang on the front and sides with a flush back. This is going to make the dimensions for my top and bottom panel 35 and a half inches by 12 and 3 quarters of an inch. To create these panels, I'm using two 96 inch 5 quarter lumber boards and hard maple from Osborne. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in learning more. I'm first going to rough cut the boards down to my final length, just over 35 and a half inches. These boards are 6 inches wide each, so I'm going to glue two of them together to make a 12 inch wide panel. Once my boards are cut slightly oversized, I can figure out the desired orientation for each board and run them through my planner for an overall thickness of one and a quarter inches. I'll be sure to remove the other quarter inch later once my panels are completely glued up for a seamless look. The only thing left for our panels is to lay them out in the proper orientation and add some wood glue to each seam. It's important to add as many clamps as possible to ensure that your panels are staying flat as they're drying. We chose to butt joint these boards, but you could use a reverse joint or a biscuit jointer depending on your preference. Once my glue is properly spread, I'll let them dry in the clamps and then run them back through my planter for the final thickness of one inch. Before running our panels through our planner one last time, it's important to remove as much excess glue as possible to avoid damaging your blade. As I mentioned, this is going to bring our overall panel thickness to 1 inch, which is going to give us a nice look on the top and bottom of our cabinet. Once our panels are surfaced, we can cut them to our final length of 35 and a half inches on our miter saw. The final detail I want to add to my panels is a small roundover on the top edges. 
This is going to soften up the edges a little bit and give it a nice modern look, but this is completely up to your preference for your project. Once my roundover is cut, I can sand both panels to 220 grit and get them ready for finishing. For my square leg, I'm going to sand the edges by hand just to give it a softer look instead of a full roundover. I think this will contrast well with the larger roundover on our top and bottom panels. To help with the assembly, I cut some small 4 inch long pieces from our scrap lumber, similar to a skirt or a table apron. I'll add a couple pocket holes to each piece and attach them on the sides in between our legs. These will help keep my legs properly spaced front to back when assembling the cabinet. I decided to set these 1 inch on the inside of my leg, so I used a small scrap block while installing. Before we assemble our cabinet, we can go ahead and pre-finish every piece with the stain of our choice. To begin assembling our cabinet, I'm going to first install our bun feet from the top side of our bottom panel. These screws are going to be covered by our legs, so it's important to install these first before moving forward. I'll be sure to measure and pre-drill to avoid cracking my wood and go ahead and install a longer screw straight into my bun foot. The easiest way to install our legs is to lay them on their back on our work surface so that we can line everything up flush. As I mentioned earlier, we'll have a 1 inch overhang on the front and sides, so I'll go ahead and slide my wine racks into place so that my legs are properly spaced before attaching. Since the bottom of my cabinet won't be seen, I'll go ahead and pre-drill once more and install a longer screw into the bottom of my leg, making sure to avoid the inside channel. To install our top, I can reinsert the wine racks into their channel and measure for a 1 inch overhang on the front and sides again. For the top, I am going to use some plugs since you will see the screws, so I'm going to pre-drill using a 2 step bit before attaching. I want to make sure these are all in the same location in each corner, so I'm going to measure and mark before drilling, once again making sure that I'm avoiding the inside channel. To create my plugs, I used a scrap piece of lumber and my plug cutting bit on my drill press. If you're interested in a more in-depth tutorial on this process, you can reference this video above. Once the glue for our plugs have dried, we can go ahead and stand them flush with the rest of our surface and add some stain to the rest of our top. Now that our wine cabinet is finished, let's go ahead and take a closer look.
Thanks for joining us for this week's episode. For more information on the products used in this build, please reference the links in the description. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment if you have any ideas for future videos. And we'll see you next time in the Builder Studio.